So in this video, I want to talk about this right here. This is a propane forge burner. And on my channel, I have a scratch built forge burner of my own design. And that burner works really well, but I wanted to show you uh, a burner that also works equally as well. Um, and it's been a, this design has been around for a really long time. And I built this several years ago. And this is a Ron Real style burner. And I just want to go over the parts, how I construct it. I mean, this isn't a, a how-to build video, but you certainly could build one just based on what I'm going to explain to you in this video. First off, what is this burner made out of? I'll go over the parts real quick and then I'll explain the theory of building this. I have a nozzle flare here. This is made out of a piece of, I believe it's 1 8 metal and I bent it, I heated it, and I bent it around, and I made a nozzle out of it. You could use something thinner. It was a little easier to work with. It just won't last as long. Ideally, you would want to make this out of stainless steel, um, but even stainless steel will burn out over time. I have an 8-inch, I believe, pipe nipple. Yeah, 8-inch pipe nipple here, 1-inch pipe nipple. And this 1-inch pipe nipple reduces down with this reducer bushing right here. And these are all parts that are readily available at the hardware store as well. And there's no welding involved to build this burner. So one inch pipe down to a one inch reducer bushing, which um, reduces it up to one and one quarter. And then this bell um, coupler here, this reducer coupler, or I guess, uh, adapter it goes from one uh, one and one quarter to one and one half and then this is a one and one half pipe nipple that originally was like this long and I nipped it in half and this is the intake and it's also used to hold this um, piece in place with friction I'll get to that in a second so those are the parts so to recap nozzle flare one inch pipe nipple reducer bushing from one inch to one quarter, a bell adapter coupler that goes from one and one quarter to one and one half, and then one and one half pipe nipple that was cut. Now I'm not gonna take this apart to show you the construction of it because everything is rusted and pretty solid. I tried taking it apart, but I didn't want to uh, take the time to do that. So inside here, if I can show you, it, what's in here, I'll get some more light here in a second, but there's a pipe, brass pipe nipple like this guy here, except a little longer, but this is a one and one eighth uh, male iron pipe nipple. This one here I think is three or maybe four inches long or three and a half inches long. So it goes from here to here. So if you could just use your imagination, it goes across like that. And then on the end of it is a cap that caps it off using also using um, gas tape, gas uh, uh, PTFE tape, Teflon tape. Make sure it's gas rated. So we have a cap, we have the nipple, we have a bushing here or a, a coupler that uh, that I have reduced, or I should say. Uh, adapt it to a quick connect here so that I can feed propane into it. So all this is just to feed propane into it. I could make this shorter, but I wanted it a little bit longer just so I had a little more flexibility um, where I could put the hose and stuff. But this, it doesn't need to be this long. This uh, quick adapter or however you're going to feed propane into this, you could directly um, uh, tap. Um, you could directly, um, I guess, screw the propane hose directly onto these uh, pipe fittings but it just happens I have a quick coupler so you could have it just as long as here and then have it all tightened in so now I want to talk about the actual orifice the orifice hole on this I think is a 0.56 um, I think it's a 0.56 but I think I, I uh, in terms of millimeters it's one point uh, two, I think, millimeters or 1.3. I think it's 1.2 or 1.3 millimeters drill bit. And you want to use a little tiny drill bit like these 
Um, I just got these uh, locally. Um, sometimes they're hard to find. You can order them off eBay as well. And what I did was I drilled a hole in this pipe nipple here. And then the pipe nipple is inserted into the bell housing up top here. So you drill a hole on either side and then you you put your pipe nipple in and then you cap it off and you want to have it as lined as closely as possible so that the so that the the orifice hole that you've drilled shoots the propane directly down the center of the tube. Um, that's going to take a little trial and error. What I found worked really well was once I had it installed here, I took a piece of pipe, a piece of hose I should say, and I clamped a piece of hose here and I fed water through it. I just put uh, some water through the hose and I was able to move this back and forth until I got the water shooting directly down the middle of the burner. So that's one trick. It doesn't have to be perfect because it is gas, but uh, if you can do that, it will make lighting and the operation of the burner a little bit more efficient and better. This burner works by the Venturi effect. So it's going to, the high pressure gas is going to come in, shoot out for the orifice hole here, come out here. It's going to mix with the air inside the, the length of the burner through the air coming in through the back here through the intake so this is my intake and in the intake I've also added in this t-nut for a restrictor plate so I've tapped the hole for a restrictor plate here um, there's more than one way of doing this I just happen to have done it this way but you can actually do it um, by tapping a hole here and then just having a plate that um, you can turn back and forth, but just happens that the one I, I've installed was like this. So I can use it to restrict the airflow as a choke. Now, this pipe nipple here, once I've drilled the hole for this pipe nipple and it's installed like that, once I got it to the spot where I like it, um, I use this nipple to tighten down to hold this in place so it won't move. So this, if you can imagine, has the edge and it's going into the threads. So it's very important that you drill this hole where there are still threads in this coupler. So when I tighten this down, it tightens down so this won't move anymore. So it's super solid and it just won't move. So. That's kind of how I held this in place. The alternative is you could also drill a hole here on both sides and then put a set screw or a bolt to hold this in place as well. That's another option. At the time I didn't have a tap and die set so I opted to do this method instead. I have a little more light here now and you can kind of see inside there how it's all set up. So the, the burner tube, the orifice tube, goes directly through the bell housing. I have my T-nut there, that's kind of in the way, but uh, that's all there is to it. You can see almost directly through the other side, you can see some light on the other side there. So there's nothing um, fancy inside there, it's just a way for the propane to mix with air. And here is the quick connect with a valve. And all I do is I connect it on like this. And that allows me to control the propane gas. But again, what you could also do is you could just directly connect this pipe onto this if this is your only propane appliance. Um, I have more than a couple of these burners, so uh, it's nice to have the quick connect. And the last thing I wanted to mention was this high pressure regulator is the key to this system as well. They typically come in red. I have mine hooked up to uh, a PSI gauge. And uh, so there's the hose all the way through and then the quick connect on the other side. But um, it's you need something with a gauge so you can tell what PSI you're operating at. And this allows you to, because this is an adjustable regulator, 
it allows you to control the PSI. Um, so you can go all the way from 1 PSI or 0 PSI all the way up to like 20 or 30 PSI, depending on the high pressure regulator you get. And the regulator is red, which denotes that it's a high pressure regulator, unlike say like your barbecue regulator, which is silver, which is a low pressure regulator. That's the key difference. This allows the your propane appliances to operate at high pressure. Here I have the propane burner connected up to the quick connect to the propane running at about 3 psi. Great.